Hey everybody and welcome back. This is my working man look because today we're going to be learning about what Brad Hussey here with the art business and craft web design and today we're going to be continuing from where we left off in our last video which was wireframing. So today we're going to design a little something something. We're going to do a little bit of design. So put on your working costume and get ready to do some hard work. That looks weird. Working man. In this stage of the web design process, when you got a wire framed up and you want to actually design something, back in the old days, and by old days, I mean like five years ago, 10 years ago, not long ago, we used just Photoshop. Photoshop to design websites. I know to probably a lot of you young and web designers out there, you're like, Brad, you're so old school using Photoshop to design your websites. Come on, man, they're bitmap files. Why? Photoshop is for editing photos. It's what photographers use to make people look prettier or musclier or bountifullier um, using the tools. Editing your face, taking out the pimples, making your eyes look nice and white, whatever it is. Uh, that's what Photoshop is for. So when like a web designer like me goes in there and uses Photoshop to design a website, um, it's just so it just doesn't make that much sense. That's the reality. But the, it's just a, it's just a tool. It's just an editor. You can you can do some basic shapes. You can add text. It's fine. If you're trying to create a production ready file for like an agency or you're working in a team, probably exporting a PSD file for your web designs might not be that um, acceptable. Now for your own personal projects, this is why I've used Photoshop so much for web designing. It's just me looking at it. All I'm using it for is just like a really specific guideline for for developing a website. So once I see, you know, the design in Photoshop, then I just start coding it up. And any good web developer will be able to take a JPEG image, a PNG image, you know, a Photoshop file and code it into its HTML, CSS counterpart. That said, why stick with old school tools when you can use the more modern ones that actually make the job easier once you get over the initial learning curve. Excuse me. So here's an example. I'm in Photoshop here. And one of the websites, one of the projects that I built for myself was a website called marketinghonestly.com. I wireframed it up. I showed you in the previous video, my lo-fi wires. So then I went over into Photoshop and just started designing it up. And from there I coded it in HTML, CSS, and then made it dynamic, blah, 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 Got you know, you've got your canvas here, you've got all your layers over here, you know, and generally you try and keep it organized. This is where when you add a new elements, text, boxes, lines, you know, colors, they'll show up here in your layers. Just to show you, like you can design a totally fine website in Photoshop. Problem is, is that, you know, once you export this, it's going to be just like a like a picture, like an image, like a JPEG bitmap image. And bitmap means when you zoom in, it's pixels. So if I were to zoom in on this, like, do you see how this is blurry? Do you see how we've got, you know, actual pixels? Like this is not a vector graphic because a vector graphic is infinitely scalable. No matter how far you zoom in or zoom out, it's always going to be crystal clear, super sharp. Now you can see everything's made up of pixels. It's not really acceptable when you're trying to create a really sharp design that your developer or that you can can use as a reference point to, to building a site. And sites nowadays, they're not just based on pixels. There's a lot of elasticity and there's a lot of dynamic sizing and it's no longer just based on pixels where you often will use like M's and percentages and things like that. We want sites that are crystal clear, super sharp uh, to match the technology that we're using today. So hence why Photoshop's not really the tool for the job, but just to show you here, you could totally use Photoshop to come up with like a, let's call it a lo-fi mock-up. Okay. Hi-fi mock-up. You'd probably use like a tool like Figma, which I'll show you. Here's another design. You see, I got the grid system here. So for my 12 column grid, a new variation on the codecollege.ca. It's another uh, website of mine. When I mocked up a new version of the site, I used Photoshop and everything's all organized over here. You know, like the hero section. We got the sales video section. We got the testimonial section. You know, everything's all neatly organized and it's nice. It works. But reality is, you know, I probably could have done this in uh, 
Figma. You know, if I were to redo this, I'd do it in Figma or Adobe XD, another Adobe tool in the Adobe suite of tools. If you've got a Creative Cloud subscription, which I do, uh, Adobe XD is part of the subscription, I'm pretty sure. Or you can add it to your plan. And so then just use the tool you're paying for. So that's how you would design, or at least what a design looks like in Photoshop. When I learned how to design websites, I used, like I was taught Photoshop. Some people used Illustrator and then Sketch came along and I was like, nah, I'm sticking with the tool I know because I could just, I could just go with what I know and not waste time learning a new tool when I design totally fine functional websites. I digress. We should probably use more relevant tools. So Adobe XD is one of the tools and here we are in Adobe XD. It's essentially the same thing as Figma, which I will show you. It's just, it's a, it's a tool that's literally meant for designing and prototyping mockups, wireframes, and uh, designing user experiences. You can see you could do like design responsive layouts. You can change, you can add components. It's all vector-based. What do I mean by vector-based? Boom. So I got this. So the screen size of this canvas, which is also nice is it's an infinite canvas. You can add as many of these as you want all over the place. So it's just kind of like you have a desk like a desk view and you can kind of move around and design just in the same canvas, which is nice. So right here, I've got a frame of um, 1920 width, which is a standard width for a large desktop, like the one I have. And uh, so there we go. We got a little background. You can call that background if you want. You can lock it so you don't move it. And then if I wanted to add some text, there we go. Let's go like this and we'll just put it centered here which is nice. Now, what if I wanted to add like a grid? I can add a grid here. There we go. It's already based on like a 12 column grid, a gutter width. Let's make it 30 pixels of gutter width. Okay, there we go. So now I can actually snap things to the grid. Boom. You know, uh, and you can show and hide the grid. So if I click on the actual uh, artboard, they call it, I can hide and show the grid. So you can design based on the grid, which is always a good idea. So that's just like you would use Adobe XD, but I am actually finding uh, I'm a little more natural with Figma. I like it, but either or, potato, potato. So here's Figma. I got a design here that I'm just kind of playing around with. I'm actually going to be redesigning my personal website, bradhussey.ca. It's kind of, and it's slow. It's a little bit of a mess. Um, so I actually am wanting to re redesign this thing so that it's more effective, functional, and I, something I can be more proud of. Um, so yeah, so I'm actually just kind of working on, okay, how can I, how can I redesign this? And so I'm using Figma to come up with some concepts that I will then code and convert to WordPress. So this is the desktop frame. And so then I've got this hero section. If I open it up, here are all the layers. Nothing's really named right now, but uh, but I would I would rename those if I wanted it to be more organized. And so you've got this hero section right here, black background with like a couple color kind of accents kind of popping down and little different shapes, uh, just kind of more brand choice. My uh, UVP, unique value proposition. So I help web designers improve their craft and make a living online. I might change that depending on how the angle I want the site, the goal of the site. Remember we talked about your goal. So we got that, uh, I got that image and, uh, and then I've got the grid in the background. So if I click on the frame, I can actually go here and see the settings. So I've got a layout grid set up. 
So you'd click plus if you wanted to add a grid, but I've already got one set up here. Here's the settings. So it's a 12 column grid and it's a uh, center. You can left align the grid system. So left align, right align. You could stretch it so the grid is fluid and goes from edge to edge, no matter the size of this, the screen or the frame. And then center, I prefer center because you don't want your site to be, I mean, I don't want this site to be infinitely wide. I want it to be a maximum width of, in this case, it's like 1260 or something like that. So each column is 70 pixels in width with a 30 pixel gutter. And then you can align everything to, to the grid. It snaps to the grid, which is nice. It's not pixel based. It's literally, you see how it's infinitely sharp? That's because it's vector based. It's not based on bitmap graphics. It's vectors, which makes for a way sharper design and is, is more true to the experience on your devices that you have retina screens and really high resolution screens. Now, because this is an image over here, this is not vector because you can't vector an actual photograph. It's bitmap based. It's all pixel based, but uh, everything else is uh, vector bitmap graphics. And again, this has an infinite canvas, so you can work all over the place. So if I were to create a new frame, I can actually add a new frame like this and I can change the width. I think you can use presets. So if you're actually doing some responsive web design and I wanted to make a version of this that was the size for the iPhone 11 Pro Max. So I would go like this and that's the frame. So what I can do is design a new version or if I wanted to like copy these layers, you can copy it and paste it in, resize everything. And then I'd probably put my opt-in down there. So you get the idea of you design responsively. You could change it for screen size. Also what you could do here in Figma is prototype. So when you go to the prototype section, you can actually create almost like animations or interactive an interactive prototype of the website. It's not the actual website, but if you were to like click on these, this uh, top right hand uh, navigation interaction item. So the hamburger icon, as they call it, if I were to, I could set up an interaction where if I clicked on this, it would create a connection and then open up like uh, a, like a separate navigation window. You can animate that out to show people like your team or your company or your web developer, your programmer, how you want certain interactions to work. So it's also why it's better than Photoshop because you can't do that in Photoshop. Whereas this is meant for designs. And also you can collaborate, you can share, you can click share, you can invite someone to collaborate, view, edit. Uh, you could show people what it looks like. You can work in real time and collaborate. And this is the tool you'd use for, for, for designing your sites. And then you can grab all the colors. So if you're designing the site now or building the site, you can go, okay, well, what's the color palette that we're using here? If I were to click on this, you can actually go to the design and see the color, uh, F3.6. You know, this background is black, triple zero, so on and so forth. What's the font that's being used? Everything like that, the letting, the typography, it's all there, the grid system. And then that's how you would design in Figma. So there it is, the 101 on designing for the web, designing your websites. Back in the old days, we use Photoshop. There's better tools now, Adobe XD, Figma. They're great tools. Links are in the resources section. Hopefully this gave you a little bit of an insight as to why you would use these tools and how to get started. So you can start designing more modern, responsive, and beautiful websites for the web. Catch you in the next one. And a hats off to you for joining me on another lesson of the art, business, and craft of web design. Hey, if you like this video, show me that you do by clicking that like bell, like bell, like button, and dinging the little bell there so that you're notified of new lessons. Make sure you subscribe as well. Leave a comment with your feedback and I'll catch you next time.